Bob and Lisa Cranmer made a low ball offer on this century home near Pittsburgh, they expected some haggling. And it was like, so. A dream come true for the former councilman and his young family. Countless, countless times I can recall as a child standing on the sidewalk, just staring at the house. Six fireplaces, three stories, with one terrifying secret lurking inside. <sighs> Although in the beginning, it seemed harmless. The radio would be on. Water would be running in the sink. We'd wake up on a regular basis with scratches and bite marks. This thing was out to hurt us. Bob and Lisa turned to the Catholic Church, hoping a priest could bless the property and solve the problem. But instead, he says, everything escalated, turning into an all-out war between good and evil. It would mangle and break the crosses on the rosaries, the crosses around our necks. They would be bent in half. One diabolical act after another, says Bob. There we go. He says the worst was this manifestation of a foul substance splattered on the walls. There's some of it there. Over the whole house, yeah. Lab tests were inconclusive. We're not sure what it is. It's some type of fluid, but we found skin cells in it. A number of dramatic things went on here. Adam Bly has a master's degree in clinical psychology and is a former skeptic turned expert demonologist. Certainly a difference between ghosts and demons. Adam says ghosts are generally harmless human souls needing prayers, while demons are insidious entities. They do enjoy conflict, pain, chaos, breaking families apart. They're very sadistic creatures. Which is why, he says, an exorcist's work must be voluntary and solitary. We'll take revenge on those that are close to us if they can't take revenge on us. And as soon as he entered the house, he knew something was wrong with the closet. It was that gut level, really strong feeling that there's something there. I remember saying, you're in there, I know you're in there. So they cut through the plaster wall. It had never been opened since the house was built and found some things in there that, that did seem to be indicative of some very strange, possibly dark stuff. Inside the sealed off, unvented void were items from all of the home's owners, including the Cranmers. Some of my son's Lego toys. How they got in there and why, we don't know. Exorcists helped the Cranmers fight back but there were serious consequences. My two sons were in psychiatric hospitals. My wife was spent several weeks in, in, a, in a psychiatric ward. There's a lot of nightmare stuff you have to go through. Adam says exercising demons is difficult because if they're present, it's with permission. So God allows a homeowner to choose to have a home be blessed. Well, the opposite can also be true. He says board games or other tools used to contact spirits are like an open invitation. They will literally mimic uh, whatever, whatever your weak spot is, whether you like the idea of guardian angels or, or your grandmother or, or sick children. As was the case recently in Indiana. A little boy first said he had a secret friend, but very soon police reported seeing the child walk up a wall. Once that process starts, that demon has been given license to do more. But the Cranmers did none of that. However, they believe someone else did, because inside that secret crawl space was a sketch of the original owners in 1909. On the back of that paper were these very malicious, or I should say evil looking descriptions that you could tell were put on there by somebody else, possibly by one of the workers. Three years after discovering that, in 2006, Bob says the demon finally left. It was somewhat like a, a, a blazing fire that eventually burned itself out. Pretty much all the major religious systems in the world have seen this problem. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Both men understand skeptics exist, but they insist so does evil. And if people don't want to believe it, Okay, but that doesn't mean it isn't true. It exists. That's why I'm telling the story. But deliver us from evil. Amen.
quien presenta desde hace tres meses comportamientos extraños, como si espíritus malignos la atormentaran. A 43-year-old woman was being tormented by evil spirits for three months. Del barrio San Jorge de Tipitapa. Su comportamiento her behavior was aggressive, throwing anything in her reach at people in her home. Two priests from the nearby Christian mission arrived at her house to pray for her and to free her from her demon. In the name of Jesus Christ leave this woman, leave her in peace, leave her in peace. The priest prayed. After several hours of prayer the woman changed from being aggressive to karma. She used to be aggressive with her son and everyone around her but now she is better. Thanks to God that they came to help her because it's what we needed. But suddenly one of the women who had been interviewed previously became possessed by the same evil spirit. Parents of course have been warned to look out for a demonic game which has been making the rounds like wildfire in schools across the country. The game is, game is called Charlie Charlie. It's played with two pencils placed across each other on a piece of paper on which yes and no words are written. The spirit of Charlie is then called up and asked questions and Charlie responds by moving the pencils. I guys remember when Ouija boards were the big thing oh, when yeah, we were kids? Yeah, yeah. Apparently teens have this new way to scare themselves. This is called the Charlie Charlie Challenge. It's flying around the internet. Here's how it works. You get two pencils. You lay one over the other. You put them on a sheet of paper and then you write yes and no in the four corners. You ask Charlie Charlie, are you here? And if the top pencil moves and lands on yes, then apparently a demon named Charlie is in your house. <laughs> Twenty-two schoolgirls, aged between 12 and 15, suffered mass demonic possession after playing a game of Charlie Charlie. The traumatic incident happened in the Choco region of Colombia. The children were screaming, writhing and hallucinating, and some were even foaming at the mouth. One victim claimed she could see a man dressed in black while possessed. Slender Man. A tall, faceless, mysterious figure. A fictional character who lurks in the background, sometimes peering over the shoulders of children. The story of Slender Man changing, evolving all the time, with help from fans all over the world, adding to the story online giving this fictional character new life every day. Waukesha, Wisconsin, just outside Milwaukee. And on a Saturday morning this past May, a horrific tale is just beginning to emerge. She appears to be stabbed. She appears to be what? Stabbed. Stabbed? Correct. Is there any bleeding going on? Her clothing has got blood on it. Okay, and you found her and she was just laying there? Yeah. A birthday sleepover with three 12-year-olds the night before. And now two girls are missing. The other, Peyton Leitner, has somehow crawled out of the woods, covered in stab wounds. Nineteen of them. She's now being wheeled into the operating room, having just told her mother her friends did this to her. An ordinary slumber party, three girls and someone else. An unknown figure getting into that party too. A fictional character from the internet named Slender Man, who so many parents had never even heard of. But listen to what these two girls begin to tell police. Anissa Wire revealing to investigators it was Morgan's idea to kill Peyton, to prove themselves, quote, worthy to Slender Man. Anissa telling police her friend suggested, quote, we should be proxies of Slender. Anissa says she was surprised by Morgan's plan, but excited to prove that this fictional internet character 
actually existed to prove the skeptics wrong. The girls were very clear with police that they were trying to kill the victim. They wanted to do it as, as a sacrifice to Slenderman. One of them said that Slenderman had been watching her. Right now, we're waiting to hear whether a 14-year-old girl will be charged as an adult for trying to kill her mother and her brother. Tonight, we know she was looking at websites involving the fictional character Slender Man just before deputies say she set her home on fire after an argument. Investigators telling us late this afternoon they found a journal belonging to the teen. Among things they say, the suspect wrote, quote, if this keeps up, there will be no safety in this house. And mom, if you ever find this before it happens, I'm sorry. We're also told she was influenced by violent online stories like Slender Man. One of her friends told us what's in those stories. Very disturbing and violent things like murder, how to kill someone, you know, guns, knives, brutal. Did you ever hear her talking about those things? Um, sometimes she would explain what happened in a story to someone.